Hello, everybody. My guest today is Tomer Tagrin. He is a CEO and co-founder of a company called Yatpo, the leading commerce marketing cloud for D2C brands. Having raised over $100 million, Yatpo has a global team of 350 and 4,000 plus clients that include Glossier, Steve Madden, MBMT, Think, and Away Travel. Tomer was a chief designer for Intel and graduated from Tel Aviv University. All right, Tomer, you ready to take us to the top? Yep. All right. All of you ex-Israeli defense folks, you're always making hundreds of millions of dollars. So when do you hit a billion dollars in revenue? Yeah, it's a good question. I would say a billion dollar probably we need like six, seven, eight years, something like that. <laughs> and something what? Like that. Very good. All right. Let's jump into the business. So, so what's the company do? And are you pure play SaaS? Yeah. So we are pure play SaaS, and what we're trying to do is we think the shift of uh, Amazon created a world of a lot of direct-to-consumer brands and everybody's going direct-to-consumer. And we think the most important thing that they need to have is their experience uh, or their marketing effort because nobody buys a Nike shoe because Nike is the most comfortable shoe in the world, right? Products are becoming a commodity. Uh, and it's only about like, how can you create an experience to bring consumers and get them buying again and again. And for that, we're trying to build like an integrated marketing stack that's going to give you everything that you need in order to build the best experience for your consumers. Yep. Okay. So, so give me a brand. I mean, you mentioned Thinks and some other brands in the in the bio, but can you tell me a story of how one of these brands is actually using you to maybe increase lift or average cart price or whatever the utility yeah, metric is you're driving? Definitely. definitely. Actually, one of the brands I like the most is Sol de Janeiro. And it's a small brand of cosmetics that I just love. The founder, she's great, and like the killing it. And not a lot of people know about them. So my favorite brands are actually when I'm telling about brands are the brands of the tomorrow, like Chubbies. I don't know if you're familiar with them. Yeah, men's like really cool. So I think we're doing a few things. One, we have like four products currently, our entire strategy. And I'm sure we're going to talk about it, like product expansion. But we started as a reviews platform. Okay. So we really help uh, those brands generate content from their customers. Think about like product reviews, site reviews. And then we enable them to deploy it on the website, email marketing, social marketing, search marketing to both increase like conversion rates retention rate and decrease uh, customer acquisition cost. And we can talk about exactly how we have a uh, integration with Google Shopping, and we also have tons of widgets that you can put across the buyer journey to convert them better. Then we launch another product. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I wanna real quick, before you go into the other three products, um, I talk to a lot of multi-product companies and a very telling kind of question and answer is always, what percent of your current paid base is currently paying and using for more than one of the products? In other words, how good are you at cross-selling inside yeah. a product? What is that number for you? So, Do you know? Yeah, so now it's like 57%. That's pretty good, more 57%. Than two product, okay. And 42% are more than three products. That's very good. Oh, three products and more, sorry. Three products and more. Well, you only have four, right? Yeah, but yeah. we'll have more. Well, let's come like back to that. Yeah, yeah. Let's come back to that sure. later in the show. So, so on average, you, you know this because you listen to the show. But on average, you have companies paying for one, two, three, four, uh, or even four products. Sometimes, what's a brand going to pay you? Call it per year to get started on the platform. Yeah. So even we have a free product and a self service that you can start with, like twenty nine dollars or nineteen dollars a month. It's actually our best lead gen. It's less as a revenue driver for us. It's more about like a lead gen because we believe that in commerce you have to serve the smaller players. Because the Glossier wasn't Glossier like five years ago, right? So we actually like to support those. So on our free products, we have like 60,000 brands that are using our free products. So that's uh, been very, very good for us uh, as well. How have they found the free product? Is this an SEO play or what, what's the play there? Yeah, so in commerce, it's not an Some of it is SEO, but to be honest, it's more about like you have a few ecosystems. So the biggest one is Shopify. Then you have Magento, or now Adobe Commerce Cloud, you have Salesforce Commerce Cloud, you have SAP Hybris, you have BCommerce, WooCommerce. So what we did is we built a really, really uh, intimate integrations with those. We really work in a lot to increase presence there. So from education to marketing dedicated in those ecosystems. And, and that's like the number one. I'll say another thing that's working for us really, really well is the agencies. Currently, we have a few hundreds of agencies that are deploying Yotpo on their customers. So think about it like, e-commerce dev or marketing uh, agencies that are leveraging Yotpo for their customers. So Tomer, so of all the revenue you added last month, what percent was through your agency channel? 26. Okay, that's pretty good. Now, now are your margins naturally mm -hmm. worse in that channel because you pay a kickback to the agencies or no? Yeah, yeah, on the first year. Yeah. But they are, uh, on roughly like our margins are like uh, 80 and a little bit, I'd say 81, 82. And uh, so like we're actually enjoying like really high gross margins. 
So that's something that we are more than fine doing. That's good. Okay. I want to get more of your backstory, but first, so um, ignoring new customers and kind of how you're using the, the free product to drive the lead gen, the average customer you have today, what are they paying per year for the platform? Yeah. So again, it, it's really, really very, the variance is really, really big. So averages here is like, can be confusing, I'll say. Yeah. And, but I will say like, we look at this like two tiers or three tiers. We, the SMBs on average are paying around 15K a year. And the mid markets are paying around uh, 45K a year. And we have a handful of enterprises. We haven't started going after enterprises. We have a handful that are paying like around 190 on okay. average. Um, okay, interesting. Um, and when you break down the revenue split between SMB, mid, and enterprise, would you say it's well, like you know, 20, 40, you know, 40, or what does it look like? No, 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 no. So SMB is where we started and we are very, very focused. I would say SMB is around like. 50 to 60 percent okay and mid market mid market is our fastest growing part of the business but it's still of the total revenue base i would say between probably 30 to 40 and enterprise is another 10 percent interesting okay so you have really perfected the model of moving people from a fifteen thousand dollar plan to a forty five thousand dollar plan by cross-selling products it sounds like that's your biggest growth driver right now yeah that's one and also we live in industry that we are lucky that a lot of those businesses are exploding right they're growing themselves yeah uh, one of when you look at it, it was public, but when you look at like a Kylie Cosmetic, right? One of our customers, like massive growth, like amazing growth because of like their, the Kardashian brand. So I think those businesses are growing. So we are growing with them. And definitely the, the, the second driver that the massive one is the multiple product without a doubt. How have you made sure to align your product pricing axes so that you can capture more wallet share as these brands grow? Or do you tie directly to GMV or number of SKUs or what is it? Yeah, so hey, it's a great question. I don't think we like master it yet. We're working on it, and I think like pricing is a never ending, uh, like it's always uh, evolving, right? Um, so I think it really depends on the product, and there are some products that's like it's different. So you think about like reviews, it's more about like how many consumers we're going to engage with, how many consumers we're going to send review requests, photo requests, etc. cetera. Uh, loyalty and referrals, it's more about like how many customers are in loyal loyalty club or how many customers did a referral. Uh, so it's we try to basically align it to usage per product. Yeah, okay. But it's generally tied to some activation metric related to the customers of Kylie Cosmetics. How many reviews can you drive for Kylie from her customers? How many can you get into her loyalty program for your other product, things like that? So then Kylie specifically not using our loyalty, but uh, again, you can go back to like Steve Madden, right? Let's use our loyalty and uh, our reviews, yeah. Yeah, okay, interesting. Put this on a timeline for me. When did you launch? 2011, we launched something completely different. End of 2011, like completely different. We can talk about that as well. Then I think like the first product went live like end of 2012, Okay. probably like, the real product. And we started monetize, monetizing 2000, end of 2014 or beginning of 2015, we actually started monetizing. Okay, and how many customers have you scaled to today? So now we have around like 4,000 paying customers. Okay. And we have, like I mentioned, like another 60,000 on the like free product and that they're using the platform as well. So let me ask you, you talked, you kind of hinted here at a pivot. So between 2011 and 2014, when you launched your pricing, how were you paying yourself? Did you guys raise capital on day one? Yeah, yeah. It was the joke that I'm telling internally that we thought we were a nonprofit organization until that... <laughs> Uh, uh, but we understood like revenue is better than uh, raising money. So yes, it was based on like uh, fundraising that we did. So before 2014, before you introduced pricing, how much total had you raised? I think it was, uh, let me calculate one, uh, like 12. Okay. Dollars. And then today, how much total? 101. Okay. 101. And why did this kind of business need to raise that kind of money to scale? Yeah, so I think w when you think about what we're trying to do, we're trying to do a few things. One, like multiple product is really, really heavy on engineering. And uh, so on one hand, you need to create like each product, right? You need to develop features and to make sure that like, you're gaining market share and ahead of the curve. On the other hand, you need to continuously launch new products and you need to build a data platform. So that's like really heavy on data science and engineering. That's the first one. Uh, second, I'll say like we are like to be like to move fast and like make big bets and be like aggressive when needed. So that allows us to do that and move quicker than most. Uh, and I'll say like, and I'm sure you know that like an inside sales model and uh, the targeting starting like SMBs, it's really, usually it's like a capital intensive at the beginning. 
Um, so I would say those are the mix of things, but it's primarily engineering. Okay, so w- how many people total on the team today? Yeah, so currently we're around uh, 340 something people. Okay, and how many are engineers? We have in engineering around a hundred people. Okay. Um, okay. So pr- pretty health, pretty healthy amount of engineers there. Now, are they based in the states, or do you have an outsourced dev team in Israel or somewhere else? No, no. So uh, we actually founded the company out of Tel Aviv in Israel. So our uh, largest headquarters is actually still uh, Tel Aviv, around two hundred people. Engineering, data science, ops, some of the service people, some of the finance people. Uh, we have here in New York, where I'm based, around one hundred and twenty-five sales marketing client services we have a small sales office out of london and we acquired a company out of boston so we now have a boston office very which company in boston swell swell interesting the loyalty yeah 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 Yeah, that the loyalty all these different product categories you're hitting are very fragmented so it doesn't surprise me that you've kind of gotten bit by the mna bug i'm sure you probably have a couple more in your pipeline yeah all right Let's dive into this model you've been the inside sales model. So it's rare I find someone that has a freemium product that can take 60,000 free years and convert some percentage of them right into a $15,000 first year ACV plan. So here here the, here's how I want to kind of break this down numbers wise. Um, I want to understand expansion, but first let's do the the not so fun thing. So gross churn annually is about what on a revenue basis? Yeah. So again, I'll divide it I'll give you the total and I'll divide it to uh, two segments before that it's important to say when you say like converting from freemium, yes, if Premium is our largest um, lead source, but also we have a lot of customers that are starting from like 20K a year. Got it's not it. just like one funnel, if that makes sense. It just does. an important note. Uh, so I'll say on gross churn, total our gross churn now, I think the last time I checked was like uh, 90%, I'll say, where the split is between SMBs as around like uh, 84. That's, and, your, re- uh, that's your retention, just to be clear, not your churn. No, uh, yeah, that's a retention, not net retention, gross <laughs> retention. Yeah. You're right. That would be like very, that'd be, very, that'd be very well, bad that's business. Yeah. <laughs> I know. And the net retention, oh no, sorry, the gross retention on mid market customers is 99%. Okay. So yeah, so 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 if you so the, the the easiest way I find to chat about this when there's a company like yours that's very mature and you have multiple cohorts and you should split those out is to you know the reason you have revenue churn is because it allows you to ignore massive ARPU differences, right? So if you kind of give me the revenue number there across your entire base, I mean it sounds like it's probably going to be something like two or three percent annually gross revenue churn. Gross revenue churn. Let me again, I'm thinking about net retention. So I'll give you the net retention. We can go if backwards from there. Yeah. What's yeah. net retention across yeah, so the whole business? Net retention across the entire business is like 95%. Okay. And what's expansion typically across the entire business? Expansion revenue. Yeah. So you can think about it, right? We said like 89.9, it's like probably 5% on the entire customer base. Where mid-market customers is around the, the net retention is 140% on average. And on the SMBs is like 94% on average. Okay. Okay. So if your if your net retention across the entire base is ninety five percent, that means all ninety five point five. Okay, ninety five point five. Yeah, that means so. so that means even though you do have a good expansion machine, it sounds like you said across the entire customer, well, SMBs, it was 5%, mid-market, it was 40%. Um, that means your churn on those have to be obviously greater than 5% and 40% since your net revenue is 95% net revenue retention. Is that right? Yeah, and also, the, yes and no, because uh, the mix of SMB is much heavier on like the current customer base versus the mid-market. So on the mid market, for example, it's like ninety nine percent net retention, uh, gross retention. Yeah. Right. And on the SMB, it's probably like eighty nine percent. Yep. 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 No, that makes sense. Okay. And then, so, so break me, kind of break down this model for me, right? So, so what is your kind of SDR to AE to customer success rep? What are your kind of your ratios look like? How have you built out your performance yeah. for salesperson onboarding? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So, a we are a big believer in the model. And we really, both of the founders are engineers, so we like to engineer things. We even engineer the go-to-market engine a little bit, even too much, I would say. But uh, the idea is like, so we know already when a lead come with like tons of machine that we build internally, should it go through an SDR or directly to an AE or directly to someone else? Like we're pretty good in numbers now and accuracy. So that really helps to improve efficiency from where we started to where we are today. <clears throat> so I'll say on the mid-market, we try to do it like, actually two to one in favor of the SDR. Okay. And in uh, SMB, it's more about like 
probably one to one or one to one point five in favor of the SDR. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so a uh, min market two SDRs for one AE SMB. It's maybe one and a half SDRs for one AE. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's good. And then what about after the sale happens? Does the account executive stay on them to get them activated, or is there a CS rep? Yeah, no, no. There's a CSM, and uh, so on the bigger one, there's even an implementation team on the bigger deals, but it's mostly like ninety eight percent. If you get a CSM, that CSM, she or he are helping you with like onboarding. And then they help you with, um, sorry, with uh, like optimization, activation, QBRs, et cetera. Do you tie the CSM to one AE each or will one CSM rep we handle try. five AEs? Yeah, so we try that. Uh, the, the way we look at it is like ACV per CSM. So it's not per AEs, meaning we want a CSM to manage between 1.1 to $1.8 million. Yep. And so that's where we are at. That's an interesting. Yeah, that's that's okay. That's an interesting way to model yeah. that. So let me ask you a question: If your CSMs drive um, better than average expansion revenue on the one point one to one point eight million ACVs they're managing, are they quota carrying? Do they get a part of that upside? Definitely, definitely, definitely. Of course. They, just like a salesperson. Yeah, definitely. Interesting. Very cool. All right, good. So, um, good. That's helpful. 101 million raised, 340 folks on the team, 100 engineers, uh, 95% net revenue retention, founded in 2011, had a bit of a pivot in 2014. Past four years, five years, you've grown to about 4,000 customers. You said your smallest customers are paying, call it, you know, $1.7 to $2,000 per month, or call it $15 to $20,000 per year, right? Yes, besides the one that are in self service, that are paying like $90 a month. Like one nine, just like uh, to start with. So okay, so help me understand kind of MRR then today. From the, uh, from the annual customers, you're right. Yeah. We have some monthly self service that's more of a legion. Uh, so for us, they are paying like and they can pay like nineteen dollars a month. Yeah. So I can't take four thousand customers times a twenty four thousand dollar ACV to get like a ninety you know eight thousand ninety eight million dollar run rate right now. You're below right. that because of your yes. SMB cohort. Yes. Okay. Yes, I hope. Next year we'll get to that to okay. that number. Okay. Mid next year, I hope. And and what do you think you'll finish this year at? Um, so I, I don't want to jinx it, but I would say like <laughs> definitely north than uh, like much more north than fifty million dollars of ARR. Okay. And probably lower than uh, seventy. Okay. And what are you at? What are you at today? Uh, so again, I want to see how the quarter ends. Um, but I'll say we're like north of uh, forty. Okay, north of forty. That's good. And then, what does growth look like over the past twelve mm-hmm. months? So, twelve months ago, what were you? If you're doing forty today, what were you doing twelve months ago? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So we've been growing in the last twelve months around like eighty, eighty-two, eighty-three percent, something like that. Okay, very healthy, very good. All right, let's uh, let's wrap up here with the famous five number. Well, first off, any um, when was the last round of capital that you raised? Like a year and a half, a, a year and a half ago. Okay, so yeah. you're ra- you're raising right now. What valuation are you raising at? No, actually, we're not raising. Are you Thank profitable God, now? Raising. No, unfortunately, we're not profitable, <laughs> but we have a lot, a lot of money in the bank. We have like around uh, $50 million in the bank. We're okay. burning around $1.1 million on a monthly basis. Your net burn is 1.1? 1. 1? Yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, good. So you got plenty of runway there. That's a, obviously a healthy place to be. Um, you're going to use some of that cash in acquisitions? Am I going to hear an acquisition announcement in the next six months? Yeah. Definitely, definitely. We're working on it very, very actively. Which which product line will this acquisition get bought onto? The loyalty, the reviews, or one of the other two? Yeah, so I, it's going to be uh, actually, we are still debating internally if it should be like on one of the product line or a new product line. Ah, uh, It's more about like uh, finding the right team of what we learned. So we really try to spend as much time with the founders uh, as possible and with the management teams. I think it's more important than... Uh, I don't know on which product line we want to bring it on. Yeah. All right. Very good, Tomer. Let's wrap up with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite business book? So actually, there's uh, it's it's a new one. Uh, it's not like explicitly a business uh, book, but I actually find it very, very similar. It's called like How to Raise Successful People. And it's really, really good. Number Highly two. Recommend it. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Uh, actually, there's a few. I think like I'll be here a cliche, but I think... Uh, Ben Horowitz and his journey in his uh, company was like, uh, for me, unbelievably what he was able to pull off. And uh, so I don't know if like, I think everybody's following him, but I don't know if I'll call it like a super special uh, following him, but yeah. Number three, Tomar, what is a favorite online tool you have to build your business? So online tools, we have a lot. Uh, I will actually say one of the things that's uh, 
not likely maybe segment. Yep. And it's like, I think it's doing a great job. And number four, how many hours of sleep are you getting every night? So I have two young boys, like one is a baby. So uh, not a lot, unfortunately between, uh, I'll say four to six. Okay. That's good. That's good. Yeah. And then, uh, what, good. yeah, that's okay. That's so married and two kiddos. And then, uh, how old are you? I'm 34. 34. Very good. All right. Last question. What do you wish your 20 year old self knew? Uh, how important it is to be humble because everything is tougher than you think. Guys, be humble. The company Yatpo launched back in 2011, went through a couple pivots, now has raised $101 million, burning $1.1 million per month, but over 50 in the bank. So plenty of runway as they look to scale, helping e-commerce brands like Kylie Cosmetics scale with four different distinct product lines, 95% net revenue retention annually right now. Again, three distinct cohorts. They have uh, these inbound leads uh, are both generated from their 60,000 folks on their free platforms via integrations with WooCommerce, uh, BitCommerce, and these other uh, Magento shops. Shopify, et cetera. And also folks come in direct uh, into their mid-market plans, even at $45,000 starting ACVs. Tomer, thank you so much for taking us to the top. Thank you.